morning, everyone. I would like to thank the organizer of the session for letting me present the results of what is what was my um, doctoral research within a, a bigger AHLC-funded project on uh, Tripilia megasites in Ukraine, looking at the possibility of uh, talking about early urbanism in old Europe. The title, I changed slightly the title of my presentation compared to the one in the program to give myself uh, a bit more options, so early cities or mega villages or neither, <coughs> and to add probably more uh, inputs to, this, to the discussion. What uh, my strand of research within the project was to look at the wider contextual settlement dynamics uh, across of what we know uh, are Tripilia sites in, uh, in the territory of Ukraine. I will start with a brief uh, introduction to the Tripilia cultural for, well, complex, cultural group, whatever you want to call it, uh, for people who are not familiar with it. So, is there a point? Yeah. So, here's where we are. This is the a broader distribution of the known Tripilia sites within the mo within modern Ukraine. And this is a close-up to show a bit of the environment where we have these sites. So the, the majority sits in the mixed forest step zone uh, in central Ukraine. And this is a bit of the, uh, uh, the environment. So we have open landscape and uh, forested wooded river valleys. The chronology <coughs> is based uh, on uh, pottery typology and this is the, the breakup of the different phases and during this uh, later period we have the development of uh, these mega sites so from phase b1 b2 to c2 A bit of uh, material culture, so we have painted pottery and figurines. Along, with, sorry, I forgot to put in some pictures of flints, but we have uh, stone tools as well. One key characteristic is, is dwell uh, dwellings. So these are two reconstruction of replica houses that we built uh, in the village where we worked and burned because that was uh, a practice common and found across the whole Tripilia world. Uh, and two weeks ago we went to excavate it, but we don't have the results to show you uh, yet. And this is the most interesting, or one of the most interesting feature of uh, Tripilia cultural complex. The development of this massive site up to 300 uh, 320 hectares Italian key uh, and my Donetsko. These are the two biggest ones, and these are the results of geophys extensive geophysics done by our German colleagues from Kiel. Our project fo focused on the site of Nebelivka, which is uh, phase uh, B2. This is uh, the chronology, the chronological range, uh, and this is the result of our. Geophysics is the first uh, completed geophysics plan of a uh, Trupilia site, mega site. We did a number of uh, test pits trying to collect samples to have uh, an internal development of, you know, a chronological internal development of the site. But unfortunately, most of the dates fall into a plateau of the <coughs> calibration curve. So 80% of our uh, dates are indistinguish statistically indistinguishable. Hence, we started to develop a theoretical model for the development of, uh, of these sites. My contribution was to trying to use the whole uh, range of settlement dates that we have, uh, the data, sorry, collected from uh, a publication the school en encyclopedia of Tripilia site published in 2004 and after a process of cleaning and uh, data cleaning and checking <coughs> and geo uh, referencing we I come up with uh, an overall distribution of almost 500 sites so line of investigations what well, the research question 
trying to understand these uh, megacenters to see if they are <coughs> agglomeration, aggregation, or early cities, mega villages, or neither. Why, where they are located, and why? How their appearance influenced the overall uh, develop uh, the Trapilia settlement patterns, appearance, development, and demise. So how they impact on the overall settlement pattern. What is their spatial relationship uh, with other, other coheval settlements? How many people were living in a mega site at the same time? And what is the impact of people living in the mega site in the local environment? And then we can start talking about you know, social, social catchment, see uh, what's happening in the micro hinterland and the, in the mega hinterland, so where people are coming from. And then we can discuss about the social implications of living so close together. So mega sites were, uh, are defined by size. So this is a plot representing the site sizes for all the known, all the 499 uh, Trapilia sites. And traditionally, the mega site has been classified, defined. Uh, the one over 100 hectares, and this is Nebelitka, the site we're working on. As you can see, the size is one of the main characteristics, characteristics for definition of mega site because they are really outliers compared to the, uh, the coheval settlements. <coughs> Sorry for the uh, so definition by size and by shape. So these are some of the the latest results of geophysics <coughs> on the site of Talianki and Madenesco, Dobrodovi and uh, Nebelitka. So one of, the, like the shape of mega sites uh, usually entails a few rings, can be from two up to nine, probably in Madenesco, of circular rings of uh, dwellings and radial uh, rows leading to an empty center. These are other examples taken from uh, satellite imagery of other mega sites. So they're quite recognizable if visible on uh, satellite image imagery. And you can see the shape is uh, quite similar. We also have uh, Tripilia non mega sites, of course, the majority uh, are non mega sites, uh, where you still have a hint to the structure of the circular structure with an empty space in the middle. But the scale and uh, the planning is quite <coughs> remarkably different. So first of all, let's see where are these mega sites within the overall uh, settlement distribution. And we can see that the majority are concentrated in the southern book uh, in the uh, Dnieper interflue. And we have some later ones um, isolated, let's say isolated, like not in this area. But the majority are in this, um, in this territory, which was known also in the earlier, since the earlier phases of Tripilia. So if we compare the distribution of megasites with Tripilia A phase, we can see that this region, this territory has been colonized since um, the earlier phases of Tripilia. Why they, they are there? What I tried to do is to see whether there was um, a settlement, you know, there, there were locational strategies. Dif the locational strategies of mega sites were different from other uh, coheval settlements. Uh, and I tackled it in this way, uh, performing a logistic regression of uh, site locations, of all the Tripilia site locations against four major uh, independent uh, environmental variables. And we saw that we, checking at the p-values, we see that there is a correlation. But if we check, uh, if we check the location of megasites against the location of known megasites and the dependence of it against the environmental uh, variables, there is no uh, relation, correlation. So that means that 
the reason why they settled, they developed the mega sites in that area, probably is not is less to do with the environment, but more to do with the social sphere. What is the impact of the development of these mega sites? This is a Gini uh, coefficient done on site size per phase, so A, B1, B2, C1, C2. And the central phase is where we have the development of mega sites. The size variability is quite uh, stable, so we can, that shows that you don't have a development of middle tier uh, settlements. So we don't have like a development of a s uh, settlement size hierarchy. So we have smaller sites and big sites. And that's also demonstrated by, uh, if we plot the number of mega sites and the number of Cohiva sites, which increase um, linearly. So we don't have a movement of people in mega sites and abandonment of smaller sites, but both grow. What is the spatial relationship between, so what is, uh, what level of centrality we can define four mega sites against uh, uh, smaller sites. Uh, I performed a global Moranzai cluster analysis to uh, see, assess what, at what, um, at what scale the mega sites become uh, outliers uh, within, with, uh, at what scale they become outliers uh, and center of a neighboring uh, cluster. So. As you can see, for both major, the major phases of uh, Tripilia megasites, we have site clustering at 100 kilometers. So within 100 kilometers, a megasite is statistically a high value in, in size, uh, size, size, size wise. So if we define uh, 100 kilometers, if we can take 100 kilometers as uh, you know, a scale at which the mega sites become central, uh, sort of central places for people, and we model a uh, catchment area of people from coming from up to 100 kilometers, and compare the number of dwellings per mega site uh, and uh, within for and for each uh, catchment of 100 kilometers per mega site, we can see a constant ratio where you have that people coming from 100 uh, kilometer can fill up to half of the mega site. So this mega site can fit a lot of people. Two minutes, okay. We have this, uh, okay. So if we take uh, Nebelivka, for instance, as, um, as case study, as, as uh, comparison of this ratio between number of dwellings of the uh, of the mega site compared to the uh, settlements, Cohiva settlements, we can see that the development of uh, what what I model as early um, neighborhoods within the mega site. So the number of dwellings of 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 this. Uh, neighborhoods is comparable to the number of dwellings uh, of the, the, the overall number of dwellings of uh, coheval settlement. So everyone coming from these coheval sites can fit within what is more or less half of the full plan of the site. What is the local, uh, the human impact on the local environment? This is a simplified, v like a sort of user-friendly version of the pollen sequence. And we can see that if you, compa if you compare it against the, the lifespan of, the, of Nebelivka, we have a very little human impact compared to previous and later phases. So if we, if we um, model a permanent population living in, in, uh, in, mega in, in Nebelivka, we can't really have these sort of signals. To conclude, and to try to bring everything together, a piece of evidence together, we can see a confluence of people coming from up to 100 kilometers, both to the mega cluster, the southern, uh, southern Bugniepe interfluve, 
and to the um, the other the mega site outside the outside the, mm, the mega cluster. We can see a definition of neighborhoods and quarters, probably uh, in a sort of bottom-up uh, way, because we don't have in the archaeological records uh, assemblages between uh, across the different dwellings are pretty similar. We have a definition of a built-up area dwellings and also a, a built uh, empty space in the middle. We have people living together for a few weeks, socializing, living very little, little in having little impact on the local environment. Returning the next year, relying on solid uh, structure. This is one of the, our uh, replica houses after two winters and two summers with no maintenance. And then more people coming. The site develops until and expands, neighborhood shifts until the scale of stress is unsustainable and people move to other mega sites. We also have quite an overlapping um, overlap um, chronology for some of these mega sites, so we might have more than one mega site active. What we still don't know is why they left, and we still have to understand is why they left. Uh, the mega site. We still have 200 years, almost of 200 years of uh, pottery production, Trupilia pottery production, after the abandonment of the last mega site. And this is for future research. And this is the very last uh, slide, a uh, few key concepts for the discussion. Um, so if we talk about uh, social aggregation, agglomeration, even urbanism, I think we have to consider. Um, the whole, because most people, uh, in, uh, especially in Trapilia studies, focused on, on mega sites, but nobody really looked at, uh, at the wider uh, landscape of coheval settlement. So, how central were these places? We can talk about mega hinterland, social catchment, so how many people and where are the people coming from. We can propose a bottom up. Uh, development of uh, mega sites of what Jennings and Earl call co cooperative units, so people collaborating, and that is um, and that is can be explained with um, sustainability. So if people come together in a bottom-up way for a short time period throughout the year, so seasonally this can be more sustainable because you don't have to keep people together permanently and you can that you could work without an authority, without a social organization. And then, as we said, centrality and scale of uh, mega sites and the importance of inbuilt empty space. So maybe, I, this is still a question, maybe we can talk about uh, the development of urban-like identity, so probably not a city, not an urban space, but an urban identity of people coming together and developing uh, closer social interactions. Thank you.